Hey everyone, Mr. Fox here. What's up? I wanted to introduce you to Throttle Stop 8. Uncle Web has added some awesome new features, including broader CPU support. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at the 4930MX. When you first launch Throttle Stop, you're going to be prompted to accept uh, the risk and click OK. That's basically going to copy this BIOS setting that you have. I have my BIOS set for 4.7 GHz. So let's start the setup process. Check these boxes here, as I've shown. You want to go into your FIVR button, which is your fully integrated voltage regulator control. And you'll see you have, um, you can unlock the voltage. I like using static voltage. You can change your cache ratio, minimum and maximum. Apply that. In order to overclock, you're going to have to check the box for each profile. In this case, I've set a max of 80. And I'm going to choose to save my voltages immediately. And go through and set. Uh, the beauty of throttle stop is being able to set different overclock profiles. So you can change clock speeds on the fly. What you want to do is find your maximum stable overclock. I like to use that as my profile 1 and then adjust down from that for your clock speeds and voltage. Again I like using static voltage. I find it a lot uh, more forgiving, more stable. Some people like the adaptive voltage with an offset. I do not. I'm an overclocker and I look for, for performance more than anything else and I find that I get the best result with that. So. Test the different clock speeds and find out which voltage is best for your situation. Again, you have to make sure that the voltage is unlocked for each profile and that the overclock box is checked. If you have a locked CPU, um, you're not going to be able to do much overclocking. So I'm assuming that you have a mobile extreme or a desk desktop X or K model CPU. You can also change with your, with your Haswell, you can change your CPU cache. I've set 45 as the maximum there. You have to unlock the voltage for the CPU cache and then you can change that as well. You can set your overclock and your cache voltage close to the, or your cache ratio close to the same. It generally gets better performance. You can change these other settings here too if you want to play with those. I won't get onto the end of that in this quick demonstration. But again, I'm going to set my uh, cache ratio to match my overclock for each profile. Some CPUs are not stable if you increase the cache voltage, so you'll just have to test it and see what your Haswell likes. So that pretty much does it on the uh, Turbo FIVR control button. You also want to look at the turbo power limits. You can change these right in here. I think you're going to find it helpful to uh, establish your max stable overclock settings with XTU or using your BIOS. You can also adjust your turbo time limits. Lower is generally better. I like disabling C states. If I want my CPU to run at a certain clock speed, I want it to run that clock speed. So. This is a matter of personal preference. Some people like their CPU to clock down. I just disable C states altogether on mine. So you want to go through and make sure that B, uh, BD Pro Chot is disabled. If you don't want C states, uncheck the C1E button. I like to set my multiplier in the clock modulation by adding those check marks. Basically, my CPU runs the speed I tell it to regardless of load. So we got our profiles all set up. Let's look at the options. We can turn on throttle stop. You can set a certain profile, one, two, three, or four, for AC and battery. Obviously you don't necessarily want your max overclock running all the time. If you have an NVIDIA or an AMD GPU, you can select that for some monitoring. Change your timer resolution and your power saver to whatever you'd like it to be. I generally set the 
power saver at a CO percentage at 100%. I like my timer resolution set all the way up to 16. If you want to set um, your hotkeys, um, it's run button, click on the hotkeys button. This allows you to change overclock profiles on the fly. Um, I usually set it for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0 to turn throttle stop on and off using my keyboard and 1, 2, 3, 4 to switch between those four different overclock profiles. Pretty straightforward. Shift control 1, 2, 3, or 4 or 0 to turn it off. So basically that's the setup. Um, You can toggle it on and off with shift control zero or by pressing the button. Taskbar icon changes from red to green. Red means it's enabled, and green means it's disabled. And as you do your hotkeys, you can toggle between the profiles one, two, three, or four. Here I'm using shift control one, two, three, and four, and you can see the radio button is moving. And so are the clock speeds you want to bench, see how your settings work out. I have a nifty little tool for, for that. I'm going to set it for uh, four threads or eight threads, whichever you like. Obviously you can't go more than you have. Since I have a quad, I'm going to set it for eight threads. And we got a 4.620 seconds on that one. So that's basically it for the 4930MX. Lots of new features, thank you Uncle Web. What's really awesome now is that uh, this works with 6 and 8 core desktop CPUs now. We're going to take a look at the 4930K that I have in my Clevo T570WM. So, same basic setup, I'm not going to go into much as much detail as I did before. My max stable overclock is uh, 45. You'll notice that some things are grayed out, like the overclock limit, which means throttle stop does not have access to those uh, MSRs or registers in the BIOS. Voltage is not adjustable with the X79 chipset using throttle stop, so you'll have to set that with your BIOS or with XTU. Here again, I've set some the same basic settings on the screen that I showed a moment ago. Same basic hotkeys. So the control is a little bit more limited with the uh, 4930K. I don't have a, a Haswell desktop 6 or 8 core X99 or anything like that that I can test it with, so you'll have to try that. So here we're going to run a quick uh, benchmark at 4.5 gigahertz. So it works pretty sweet. It's really nice that. Uh, we have this control now with the desktop CPU. If you notice in the uh, window here, you can scroll up and down and see all the turn it on and off there. You can scroll up and down and see all of the cores and threads. If you notice the voltage, even though it's not adjustable, it is kind of adaptive. As I switch between the profiles, the voltage is changing. Finally, let's take a look at the 3920XM. It's always worked with that, and it works the same. In my YouTube channel, you'll find some other videos where I show more setup with 3920XM. But just to put a demo here, show that it works just as well as previous versions of Throttle Stop. You can change your uh, flex voltage there in the TRL button. You notice I, if I change it. It's not. I haven't changed it in each profile. But if I go back in there, change it for a lower clock speed. Obviously, I don't need 72 flex. So for 41, I can set it at 10. That's more than enough. Set it at 20 for 43. Again, that's more than enough. Test it. Find out what what works best for your CPU. But as I toggle through the different uh, profiles, you can watch the the, the voltage changes to whatever I have set on the TRL button. Turbo power limits, the same thing that I demonstrated earlier. 
can set it right in there. Get on the option screen, pretty much things for, as I demonstrated before, hotkeys, the whole works. Works the same on all three of these CPUs. I also here like to disable my C states and, and check all the buttons in my set. You notice the max button is able is enabled there, so want to run a quick thread or a quick uh, benchmark with this. At 4.1 gigahertz, we got 5.356 and then 4.7. 4.651. Not bad. Thanks, Uncle Webb. This is a really awesome software you've given us, as usual. You guys have a great day. Thanks for watching.